The theatre of ancient Greece, or ancient Greek drama, is a theatrical culture that flourished in ancient Greece 700 BC. The city-state of Athens, which became a significant cultural, political, and military power during this period, was its centre, where it was institutionalized as part of a festival called the Dionysia, which honoured the god Dionysus. Tragedy, comedy, and the satyr play were the three dramatic genres to emerge there. Athens exported the festival to its numerous colonies and allies in order to promote a common cultural identity. Etymology, the word iii plus or minus i cubed a cubed iii plus or minus, from which the word tragedy is derived, is a compound of two Greek words, iii cubed ii or goat, and a three-quarters ii registered trademark meaning song, from a one-quarter euro i micron iii micron i to the first i one-half, to sing. This etymology indicates a link with the practices of the ancient Dionysian cults. It is impossible, however, to know with certainty how these fertility rituals became the basis for tragedy and comedy. Origins Martin Litchfield West speculates that early studies in Greek religion and theatre, which are interrelated, especially the Orphic Mysteries, was heavily influenced by Central Asian shamanistic practices. A large number of Orphic graffiti unearthed in Olbia seem to testify that the colony was one major point of contact. Greek tragedy as we know it was created in Athens around the time of 532 BC, when Thespis was the earliest recorded actor. Being a winner of the first theatrical contest held at Athens, he was the exogen, or leader, of the dithyrams performed in and around Attica, especially at the rural Dionysia. By Thespis' time the dithyram had evolved far away from its cult roots. Under the influence of heroic epic, Doric choral lyric and the innovations of the poet Orion, it had become a narrative, ballad-like genre. Because of these, Thespis is often called the father of tragedy. However, his importance is disputed, and Thespis is sometimes listed as late as 16th in the chronological order of Greek tragedians. The statesman Solon, for example, is credited with creating poems in which characters speak with their own voice, and spoken performances of Homer's epics by rhapsods were popular in festivals prior to 534 BC. Thus, Thespis's true contribution to drama is unclear at best, but his name has been immortalized as a common term for performer a Euro a thespian. The dramatic performances were important to the Athenians a Euro this is made clear by the creation of a tragedy competition and festival in the city Dionysia. This was organized possibly to foster loyalty among the tribes of Attica. The festival was created roughly around 508 BC. While no drama texts exist from the 6th century BC, we do know the names of three competitors besides Thespis, Cholerilus, Pratinus, and Phrynicus. Each is credited with different innovations in the field. More is known about Phrynicus. He won his first competition between 511 BC and 508 BC. He produced tragedies on themes and subjects later exploited in the Golden Age such as the Danids, Phoenician women and Alcestis. He was the first poet we know of to use a historical subject a Euro his fall of Miletus, produced in 493-2, chronicled the fate of the town of Miletus after it was conquered by the Persians. Herodotus reports that the Athenians made clear their deep grief for the taking of Miletus in many ways, but especially in this, when Phrynicus wrote a play entitled A Euro Oe the Fall of Miletus a Euro and produced it, the whole theatre fell to weeping. They find Phrynicus a thousand drachmas for bringing to mind a calamity that affected them so personally, and forbade the performance of that play forever. He is also thought to be the first to use female characters. Until the Hellenistic period, all tragedies were unique pieces written in honor of Dionysus and played only once, so that today we primarily have the pieces that were still remembered well enough to have been repeated when the repetition of old tragedies became fashionable. New inventions during the classical period. After the great destruction of Athens by the Persian Empire in 480 BC, the town and Acropolis were rebuilt, and theatre became formalized and an even greater part of Athenian culture and civic pride. This century is normally regarded as the golden age of Greek drama. The centerpiece of the annual Dionysia, which took place once in winter and once in spring, was a competition between three tragic playwrights at the theatre of Dionysus. 
each submitted three tragedies, plus a satyr play. Beginning in the first competition in 486 BC each playwright submitted a comedy. Aristotle claimed that Aeschylus added the second actor, and that Sophocles introduced the third. Apparently the Greek playwrights never used more than three actors based on what is known about Greek theatre. Tragedy and comedy were viewed as completely separate genres, and no plays ever merged aspects of the two. Satyr plays dealt with the mythological subject matter of the tragedies, but in a purely comedic manner. Hellenistic period, the power of Athens declined following its defeat in the Peloponnesian War against the Spartans. From that time on, the theatre started performing old tragedies again. Although its theatrical traditions seem to have lost their vitality, Greek theatre continued into the Hellenistic period. However, the primary Hellenistic theatrical form was not tragedy but new comedy, comic episodes about the lives of ordinary citizens. The only extant playwright from the period is Nanda. One of new comedy's most important contributions was its influence on Roman comedy, an influence that can be seen in the surviving works of Plautus and Terence. Characteristics of the buildings The plays had a chorus from 12 to 15 people, who performed the plays in verse accompanied by music, beginning in the morning and lasting until the evening. The performance space was a simple circular space, the orchestra, where the chorus danced and sang. The orchestra, which had an average diameter of 78 feet, was situated on a flattened terrace at the foot of a hill, the slope of which produced a natural theatron, literally watching place. Later, the term theatre came to be applied to the whole area of theatron, orchestra, and scona copyright. The Corophius was the head chorus member who could enter the story as a character able to interact with the characters of a play. The theatres were originally built on a very large scale to accommodate the large number of people on stage, as well as the large number of people in the audience, up to 14,000. Mathematics played a large role in the construction of these theatres, as their designers had to be able to create acoustics in them such that the actors' voices could be heard throughout the theatre, including the very top row of seats. The Greeks' understanding of acoustics compares very favorably with the current state of the art. The first seats in Greek theatres were wooden, but around 499 BC the practice of inlaying stone blocks into the side of the hill to create permanent, stable seating became more common. They were called the proedria, and reserved for priests and a few most respected citizens. In 465 BC, the playwrights began using a backdrop or scenic wall, which hung or stood behind the orchestra, which also served as an area where actors could change their costumes. It was known as the skarna. The death of a character was always heard behind the skarna, for it was considered inappropriate to show a killing in view of the audience. Though there is scholarly argument that death in Greek tragedy was portrayed off stage primarily because of dramatic considerations, and not prudishness or sensitivity of the audience. In 425 BC a stone scene wall, called a paraskenia, became a common supplement to scar now in the theatres. A paraskenia was a long wall with projecting sides, which may have had doorways for entrances and exits. Just behind the paraskenia was the proskenion. The proskenion was beautiful, and was similar to the modern-day proscenium. Greek theatres also had tall arched entrances called parodoi or acidoi, through which actors and chorus members entered and exited the orchestra. By the end of the 5th century BC, around the time of the Peloponnesian War, the scar now, the back wall, was two stories high. The upper story was called the episcenion. Some theatres also had a raised speaking place on the orchestra called the Legion. Scenic elements there were several scenic elements commonly used in Greek theatre, meshane, a crane that gave the impression of a flying actor. Ekkaikalama, a wheeled platform often used to bring dead characters into view for the audience, trapdoors, or similar openings in the ground to lift people onto the stage, pinnocks, pictures hung to create scenery, thermometer, more complex pictures built into the second level scene, phallic props were used for satyr plays, symbolizing fertility in honor of Dionysus. Masks, masks and ritual. The ancient Greek term for a mask is prosopon, and was a significant element in the worship of Dionysus at Athens, likely used in ceremonial rites and celebrations. 
Most of the evidence comes from only a few vase paintings of the 5th century BC, such as one showing a mask of the god suspended from a tree with decorated robe hanging below it and dancing in the Pronomos vase, which depicts actors preparing for a satyr play. No physical evidence remains available to us, as the masks were made of organic materials and not considered permanent objects, ultimately being dedicated to the altar of Dionysus after performances. Nevertheless, the mask is known to have been used since the time of Aeschylus and considered to be one of the iconic conventions of classical Greek theatre. Masks were also made for members of the chorus, who play some part in the action and provide a commentary on the events in which they are caught up. Although there are 12 or 15 members of the tragic chorus, they all wear the same mask because they are considered to be representing one character. Mask Details Illustrations of theatrical masks from 5th century display helmet-like masks, covering the entire face and head, with holes for the eyes and a small aperture for the mouth, as well as an integrated wig. These paintings never show actual masks on the actors in performance. They are most often shown being handled by the actors before or after a performance, that liminal space between the audience and the stage, between myth and reality. This demonstrates the way in which the mask was to a Euro melt a Euro unregistered trademark into the face and allow the actor to vanish into the role. Effectively, the mask transformed the actor as much as memorization of the text. Therefore, performance in ancient Greece did not distinguish the masked actor from the theatrical character. The mask makers were called skeuopoios or a Euro OE maker of the properties, a Euro thus suggesting that their role encompassed multiple duties and tasks. The masks were most likely made out of lightweight, organic materials like stiffened linen, leather, wood, or cork, with the wig consisting of human or animal hair. Due to the visual restrictions imposed by these masks, it was imperative that the actors hear in order to orient and balance themselves. Thus, it is believed that the ears were covered by substantial amounts of hair and not the helmet mask itself. The mouth opening was relatively small preventing the mouth to be seen during performances. Bavane and Wiles posit that this small size discourages the idea that the mask functioned as a megaphone, as originally presented in the 1960s. Greek mask maker, Thanos Fovelis, suggests that the mask serves as a resonator for the head, thus enhancing vocal acoustics and altering its quality. This leads to increased energy and presence, allowing for the more complete metamorphosis of the actor into his character. Mask functions, in a large open-air theater, like the Theater of Dionysus in Athens, the classical masks were able to create a sense of dread in the audience creating large-scale panic, especially since they had intensely exaggerated facial features and expressions. They enabled an actor to appear and reappear in several different roles, thus preventing the audience from identifying the actor to one specific character. Their variations help the audience to distinguish sex, age and social status, in addition to revealing a change in a particular character a Euro unregistered trademark s appearance, for example Oedipus after blinding himself. Unique masks were also created for specific characters and events in a play, such as the Furies and Aeschylus a Euro unregistered trademark Humanites and Pentheus and Cadmus and Euripides a Euro unregistered trademark the Bacchae. Worn by the chorus. The masks created a sense of unity and uniformity, while representing a multi-voiced persona or single organism and simultaneously encouraged interdependency and a heightened sensitivity between each individual of the group. Only two to three actors were allowed on the stage at one time, and masks permitted quick transitions from one character to another. There were only male actors, but masks allowed them to play female characters. Other costume details the actors in these plays that had tragic roles wore boots called katherni that elevated them above the other actors. The actors with comedic roles only wore a thin-soled shoe called a sock. For this reason, dramatic art is sometimes alluded to as a euro oe sock and busk in a euro melpomene is the muse of tragedy and is often depicted holding the tragic mask and wearing katherni. Thalia is the muse of comedy and is similarly associated with the mask of comedy in the comedic socks. See also, references. Additional literature, Brockett, Oscar G. and Robert Ball. The Essential Theatre 7th ed. Harcourt Brace, Orlando, 2000, Brook, Iris. 
Costume and Greek Classical Drama. Methuen, London, 1962, Buckham, Philip Wentworth, Theatre of the Greeks, London 1827. Davidson, J. A., Literature and Literacy in Ancient Greece, Part 1, Phoenix, 16, 1962, PPA 141 Euro 56, Ibid, P. Sistratus and Homer, TAPA, 86, 1955, PPA 1 Euro 21. Easterling, P. E. The Cambridge Companion to Greek Tragedy. Cambridge, UK Cambridge University Press. ISBN A 0 521 41245 5. Easterling, Patricia Elizabeth. Hall, Edith, Greek and Roman Actors, Aspects of an Ancient Profession, Cambridge University Press, 2002. ISBN 0 521 65140 9. Else, Gerald F., Aristotle's Poetics, The Argument. Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1967. The Origins and Early Forms of Greek Tragedy, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1965. The Origins of I Mail I B Unregistered Trademark I I Unregistered Trademark I, Hermes 85, 1957, PPA 17 46. Flickinger, Roy Carlston, The Greek Theatre and Its Drama, Chicago, University of Chicago Press. 1918, Freund, Philip, The Birth of Theatre, London, Peter Owen, 2003. ISBN 0-7206-1170-9, Hay, A. E., The Attic Theatre, 1907. Harsh, Philip Whaley, A Handbook of Classical Drama, Stanford University, California, Stanford University Press. London, H. Milford. Oxford University Press, 1944. Lesky, A Greek Tragedy, Trans. H. A., Frankfurt, London and New York, 1965. Lay, Graham. A Short Introduction to the Ancient Greek Theatre. University of Chicago, Chicago, 2006. Los Galzo, Donato, Il Publico a Titro nella Grecia Antica, Roma 2008. MacDonald. Marianne, Walton, J. Michael, The Cambridge Companion to Greek and Roman Theatre, Cambridge Year. New York, Cambridge University Press, 2007. ISBN 0-521-83456-2, Moulton, Richard Green, The Ancient Classical Drama. A Study in Literary Evolution Intended for Readers in English and in the Original, Oxford, The Clarendon Press. 1890. Padilla, Mark William, Rites of Passage in Ancient Greece, Literature, Religion, Society, Bucknell University Press, 1999. ISBN 0-8387-5418-X, Pickard Cambridge, Sir Arthur Wallace, De Theorem, Tragedy, and Comedy, Oxford 1927. The Theatre of Dionysus in Athens, Oxford 1946. The Dramatic Festivals of Athens, Oxford 1953. Rabinovitz, Nancy Sorkin. Greek Tragedy. Malden, Massachusetts, Blackwell Publishers. ISBN A978-1-4051-2160-1. Ridgway, William. Origin of Tragedy with Special Reference to the Greek Tragedians, 1910. U. Xavier, Dionysism and Comedy. 1999. Review, Ross, Stewart. Greek Theatre. Wayland Press, Hove, 1996, Rosick, Eli, The Roots of Theatre, Rethinking Ritual and Other Theories of Origin, Iowa City, University of Iowa Press, 2002. ISBN 0-87745-817-0, Schlegel, August Wilhelm. Lectures on Dramatic Art and Literature, Geneva 1809. Sommerstein, Alan H., Greek Drama and Dramatists, Routledge, 2002. Sorvino Inwood, Christiane, Tragedy and Athenian Religion, Oxford, University Press 2003. Tsaridis, Stavros, Greek Mime in the Roman Empire 184-232. 
Varrakis, Angie. A Euro OE Research on the Ancient Mask A Euro, Didascalia, Vol 6.1 Spring 2004. Bivain, Chris and David Wiles, The Masks of Greek Tragedy as Point of Departure for Modern Performance. New Theatre Quarterly 67, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, 2004. Vovilis, Thanos and Giogos Zombulikis. The Acoustical Mask of Greek Tragedy, Didascalia Vol 7.1. Wiles, David. Greek Theatre Performance, An Introduction. Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, 2000, Ibid. The Masks of Nanda, Sign and Meaning in Greek and Roman Performance, Cambridge, 1991. Ibid. Mask and Performance in Greek Tragedy, From Ancient Festival to Modern Experimentation, Cambridge, 1997. Wise, Jennifer, Dionysus Writes, The Invention of Theatre in Ancient Greece, Ithaca 1998. Review. Zimmerman, B. Greek Tragedy, An Introduction, Trans. T. Maria, Baltimore 1991. External links, Ancient Greek Theatre History and Articles, Drama Lesson 1, The Ancient Greek Theatre, Ancient Greek Theatre, The Ancient Theatre Archive, Greek and Roman Theatre Architecture A Euro Dr. Thomas G. Hines, Department of Theatre, Whitman College, Greek and Roman Theatre Glossary. Illustrated Greek Theatre Euro Dr. Janice Siegel, Department of Classics, Hampton Sydney College, Virginia, Searchable Database of Monologues for Actors from Ancient Greek Theatre, Legion, a journal of ancient theatre with free access which publishes original scholarly articles including its reception in modern theatre, literature, cinema and the other art forms and media, as well as its relation to the theatre of other periods and geographical regions.